get it on the go. Entries and results from every track in the United States available on your iPhone, BlackBerry, or other web-enabled handheld device. Mobile.ustrotting.com. Harness racing delivered to you. A physical examination can be used to determine the source of most lameness, but sometimes a joint flexion test can be useful to help find a soreness problem. Here, Barry Carter, DVM, performs a physical examination and flexion test on three-year-old pacer Bradley Scott. It's the most important thing of what I do is the physical examination because I, if I don't know what normal is, you can never identify abnormal. So you can do the flexion test, anybody can do that, but you still need to feel their legs and feel for any other mountains. Simple things for people is feel their legs every day. Check for heat, check for swelling, check for a pain response. If something's going on, they're going to tell you. Most of them are stoic animals, so they're not going to show you something unless there's something significant going on. So. Each horse is I actually feel their bicep down over the point of their shoulder. Extend down their bicep. I feel their scapula, which is the shoulder blade, and their humerus, which is the shoulder bone or it's the part that makes up the shoulder joint. Then I feel the elbow, the elbow joint, down the radius, and then I feel two joints in the knee. The antibrachial carpal joint, which is the top joint, doesn't affect standard breads. Uh, common joint injury in thoroughbreds, and then I feel the middle carpal joint, which is the most common uh, source of lameness in a standard bread uh, race horse. What I'm looking for is joint effusion, swelling in the joint. Then I feel down the flexor tendons, the super digital, superficial digital flexor tendon is the one that's closest to the skin. It's a half moon shaped structure. The deep digital sits right inside of it. And then the suspensory ligament sits deep to that and close to the cannon bone. Then I feel the fetlock joint. I'm feeling the palmar pouches and then the dorsal pouches. Down on the pastern joint and then to the coffin joint. Then I do the same thing with the leg with the tension out the leg. So I flex the foot a little bit. Now I'm able to take those flexor tendons and actually move them so I can distinctly feel the difference between the superficial digital flexor and the deep digital flexor. And again, I'm looking for inconsistency, swelling, thickening, and a pain response. So then I'll do the same thing on this suspensory. On the fourth metacarpal bone, which is the outside splint bone. The cannon bone itself, the third metacarpal bone. And then I feel it on the second metacarpal, which is the inside splint bone. And all I'm doing is looking for a pain response, and there's a pain response. Okay? The horse reacts to me grabbing its splint right front. Then I'm going to feel the origin of the suspensory, where the suspensory attaches onto the back of the cannon bone. Again, I'm looking for any thickening, swelling, or pain response. I'm going to run down, follow the suspensory where it attaches onto the sesamoids, and I'm going to look for a pain response just by manipulating the ankle a little bit and putting pressure on the sesamoid, and this horse shows no pain response. And then I'm going to feel the distal sesamoidian ligaments, which are ligaments that attach the sesamoid onto the back of the long pastern bone. I'm going to feel again the pastern joint and the coffin joint. Then I'm going to put stress on the coffin joint itself. What I do is I extend the leg, and I actually put pressure by rotating the foot without flexing it and looking for a pain response. And again, I get a mild pain response on this, this horse. The next thing I do is I flex the fetlock joint, which also flexes the coffin joint and the pastern joint. That's why I try to discern by flexing the coffin or manipulating the coffin joint alone. So I'll flex that and look for a pain response, no pain response. And again, no pain response. So then I come up, I come up and I flex the carpus. Now I've let the ankle extend, so I'm not putting any pressure on the lower leg. I place a hand on the radius, one hand on the cannon bone, and I push with one and pull with the other. And again, what I'm looking for is a pain response, which I don't get any on this horse. Sorry. Look at. Uh, 
for a pain response on the apaxial muscles. Back to the middle gluteal muscle. And then all the way to the tail head, I follow the back muscles. And I do that on the contralateral or opposite side, so if the horse gets mad, he's going to kick with the opposite leg and not with the leg that I'm on that side. Cool. The other thing is I always stay in contact with the horse. You always see me when I'm working on a horse that I have a hold of its tail. So if they start to do something, I can knock them off balance and maintain the advantage. Then I go back over the gluteal muscle, right to the tuber coxy, which is this uh, hip that some people call it's not actually the hip joint, but it makes up part of the pelvis. And again, all I'm looking for is a pain response. Then I go over, if I'm stepping up, just have to step in. Then I go over the whirl bone or the trochanteric bursa. And I'm looking for a pain response there again. And down over the quadricep muscle. Again with a leg with a weight bearing. I'll feel for abnormalities in the quadricep. And then I palpate their stifle joint. They have three joints within the stifle. And I actually palpate all three joint spaces. I'm feeling the inside joint, the femoral patellar joint and the lateral femoral tibial joint out here. And then the rest of the exam is pretty much the same as the front leg, except I go down, feel the tibia, the bone, the long bone that connects to the hock. The hock's made up of four joints. So I feel the big joint first, which is the tarsopural joint. And then I feel the three lower ones, the proximal intertarsal, the distal intertarsal, and the tarsal metatarsal joint. Then in the lower leg, the exam is exact, exactly the same as the front. The structures are the same. So I feel the superficial, the deep, the suspensory, the lock joint, pastern joint, coffin joint. And I always check for digital pulses on both sides, front, or front and rear both. Then the rest of my exam is the same. I take the leg, I take the pressure off it by flexing the fetlock. Now I can move those flexor tendons again where when they're weight bearing I can't. And I look for a pain response. The pain response is the same. It's a withdrawal response like it was on the front leg. But when I'm putting pressure to the inside, they withdraw to the outside. You can see them move the leg away from my hand, actually towards me. And then I flex the fetlock just like I did on the front leg. This has been Tips of the Trade. On behalf of Hoofbeats Magazine, thank you for joining us. To submit a topic idea for Tips of the Trade, send it via email to tj.burkett at ustrotting.com or fax it to 614-222-6791. Or mail to Tips of the Trade, Care of Hoofbeats Magazine, 750 Michigan Avenue, Columbus, Ohio, 43215.